sessions in the sports school just to make you all understand how important it is to accept failures and go ahead failures are the stepping stones to help us achieve our goals yes we do need to keep our goals streamlined with bigger visions achieving things which are which is unique but then we all need to work for it it can never be achieved the easier way therefore these type of motivational talks will help each one of us to understand for everyone it is a learning period we all learn every day is a day of learning so we all need to understand that when failures are there let us accept it but that failure also helps us to learn something let us not repeat that mistake again it might not just be a mistake but it is something we ought to learn from what we have done therefore these sessions are being organized are being scheduled to help each one of us to grow we all need to grow and each time we achieve a milestone it is something we all need to feel happy about and then move ahead to add on to this i also have balu sir here who would take you through you know how it is to you know carve that path of success it is not an easy journey for any of the people who have been successful so it's an eye opener for each one of us and this is what rohan sir will also be telling us and taking us through so balu sir are you there Uh, yes ma'am good evening good evening sir good very good evening, evening. Yeah. good evening yeah yeah good evening uh, to all of you uh, just uh, i mean uh, principal ma'am just spoke about uh, how important uh, you have to learn from your uh, failures and uh, today when uh, rohan uh, uh, will address you uh, you will hear a lot of that uh, i know rohan uh, from the time he was just like you all Uh, he was uh, uh, nobody knew who rohan bopanna was except uh, people who were working with him i mean he was like 14 no 14 plus he he came to pune he came from kurg he, he hardly played uh, he had hardly played any uh, major tournaments or uh, seen success so rohan is the right person to talk to all of you here because uh, he didn't see much success uh, i mean not even early i mean i think he's su so called success he must have uh, i think he got it when he was 20 or 21 he won a, a men's tournament in uh, in chennai so till then he didn't have any great uh, success but uh, he kept uh, he kept at it and uh, there is no other way uh, but to be persistent uh, committed and working hard for a long period of time uh, nobody has seen success in a short period of time or through any shortcuts uh, every person you come across or you hear about on television or you read in the newspaper having seen success either at olympics or uh, slams or in test cricket or uh, you know in any sport be it they all have a, a story which is a lot of hard work pain disappointment sorrow and tears uh so children uh, that's the first thing you must understand that uh, it is not going to be a, a smooth ride to become a, a professional uh, sports person to be a successful sports person is any day lot 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 more challenging than being a successful academician you know you can aim to be a a top ranked uh, i mean a top uh, ranker in uh, iit entrance or even in iit Uh, or in a medical school but in my opinion that is not as difficult as compared to you know being a, a, a professional sports person but uh, having said that the the journey you will go through no matter how far you go because uh, nobody knows except you how far you can go you can decide 
the sky is the limit and go all the way like uh, neeraj is a good example uh, uh, of you know where he started and uh, is olympic uh, gold medalist so it is he who decided he can go this far all the support i mean uh, i mean you are i mean you know i know that there have been so many sports persons in india who have had similar kind of uh, support in the past but they chose to go whatever distance and uh, that was it neeraj chose to go further and that's where he is and uh, same with uh, with rohan i mean you know like again coming back to his story i mean he was in pur and we are talking about many many years ago and uh, he came to pune and uh, his journey began there and uh, i mean i don't want to say much about uh, rohan's experience so uh, it, it best is for him to you know share it with you but i've seen it first hand so i know where he started and he was just like you i know when i see you all now i mean rohan was exactly like that i'm sure he had stars in his eyes and uh, he had dreams when he came to pune but uh, the most important thing is he uh, stuck to his dreams and uh, he also worked towards it the, i mean i know the disappointments he has been through i have traveled with him for uh, tournaments where uh, you know he hasn't seen much success And that's the reason uh, I, i suggested that uh, rohan is the right person to speak to we are trying to uh, get him because uh, he is right now uh, uh, you know uh, in us uh, in new york for us open so you know trying to get him <laughs> i don't know what is the uh, thing it's it's morning there i don't know if any emergency has come up because normally he is on time so i'm trying to reach him and uh, you know get him to speak to to you all because right now rohan is uh, i mean for tennis players you know playing slams and davis cup is like the you know, the highest you can and be at, uh, at as a pro as a tennis pro and rohan has been doing it for uh, so many years i think uh, he's been playing davis cup itself for the last uh, 19 years if i am not mistaken he's been in the davis cup team and uh, he's been playing the the slams for so many years so you know for most tennis players it's a it's a dream to participate in in one slam play for the country you know it's a, it's a it's a dream and uh, he's just been living his dream for the past 20 years so it's somebody who's uh, you know who knows what it is and i also know that when he started or when he was young he didn't have half i mean maybe half is an exaggeration not even as much facilities as all of you have in terms of support in terms of uh, guidance uh, you know in terms of exposure uh, everything put together you know so it's a, it's a, it's been a very very hard uh, uh, um, uh, climb for him and credit to him that he went all the way and he was once ranked number 3 uh, in the world in in doubles and uh, he has played grand slam finals he has won a slam so he has played olympics for countries unfortunate he didn't have a medal i think uh, last olympics in rio he and sanya i mean they, they should have won the gold i mean they were they were the favorites unfortunately you know they lost uh, they lost in the semis and then uh, they had they had a tough uh, next match and uh, they couldn't even get bronze but again talking about disappointments i mean even at that stage he still has disappointments and this olympics he couldn't even go it's no fault of his i mean there was nobody else ranked as high as him so he couldn't get an entry i mean he was ranked 30 odd in the world but uh, there was nobody else from india who had the similar ranking so he couldn't get into the doubles so disappointments will come all the time i mean another story of disappointment or uh, struggle if you want to know again about rohan uh, after all the covid and pandemic last year this year they started the australian open again a slam event and uh, they said okay they had the bubble arranged and they go now everything was taken care of players were put up separately all the arrangements were done he was asked to fly via uh, doha i mean uh, he had a 26 hour uh, transit in doha to start with because the flight from doha was going to melbourne only at certain period of uh, certain days and he had to be there and uh, he waited 26 hours in doha airport because the hotels were not open and then he flies he gets into melbourne he goes into his room and then they were they tested and they were waiting for the result and uh, when he was waiting for the result he got to know that somebody in the flight 
no in the flight that particular flight from doha to melbourne somebody in the flight was tested positive so the whole, all the passengers of that flight had to go through one month of uh, quarantine sorry uh, two weeks of uh, quarantine and when you're talking about quarantine he was in a room like you know this is how he described it i mean it's his words i'll just repeat he said i had a room with three walls and a curtain if i opened the curtain was another wall so he didn't see any human being for two weeks he saw only walls <laughs> but uh, he kept himself uh, occupied obviously you know all sportsmen can uh, train and they can do activities but most important thing uh, for all, all of you to notice he actually enrolled for an online course and he took up an online course and uh, that course was I mean, over a period of time you sub, you, you submit your tutorials uh, every month or so but rohan was doing it every day because he said i had all the time so you know he in two weeks he could do most of the tutorials because uh, he had all the time in the world so you know you looking you looking at how you can convert something which you consider as a as a struggle or a disadvantage into something very positive for yourself and these are all you know uh, real examples i mean these are not stories uh, created by me to make it interesting and this happened like uh, in this january a few months 6 uh, 7 months ago so just a brief uh, background of uh, rohan now, let me try to uh, reach him uh, again i mean uh, he's normally always on time so i don't know i'm a little worried let me check uh, what's going on at that end uh, ma'am please uh, take over i'll just uh, call uh, rohan sure sure sir thank you very true sky is the limit for all of us and we all need to work to make sure that uh, you know we could achieve what we are going in for and yes this as sir rightly said disappointments are there but then with that we need to make it a situation which will which we could enrich on going on further so sujit sir could you add on to all this because every day you are uh, with these kids and what would be uh, your words for them hey guys good evening i'm sujit sachdanan i'm one of the tennis coaches of uh, the sports school rbta um yeah adding on to what the principal ma'am and uh, balu sir said about all the struggles of a pro player and yet achieving his dreams um i would like to add that there's one thing called belief that all of you should have in your path right if that one thing that's going to always keep you keeps you going no matter what happens what you come across what kind of difficulties um, you come across and there's going to be a lot of struggle for sure but i think this one belief that you will make it is going to take you a whole long way in your career whatever the sport may be cricket tennis football i know we have uh, everyone out here but i feel that one thing that can really uh, make a difference is that belief in yourself i mean you might have a lot of people not believing in you your other friends or whoever it is but if you believe that you can make it i'm pretty positive you will make it um yeah that's all i have to say and um, yeah ma'am that's the one yeah. thing uh, okay thank you thank you sir very true we need to believe in ourselves believing in ourselves helps us to take the next step ahead and yes there are difficulties there are various situations but the moment i believe in myself i know i will reach if not there somewhere near it but then yes we can try our level best to make sure that we keep aiming high and we keep moving ahead so uh gagan sir is there hi ma'am yes sir so uh, sir i would like you to give in your uh, inputs here uh ma'am i would say like all our coaches are pretty much on the same page and you know like what sujit sir sujit said and balu sir said even i think that you know belief is really important for all our players and if they can do that then definitely they see a lot of results in their life Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, ma'am, could I? Um, yes, sir. Okay. I 
I think until uh, Rohan joins, um, could I ask some of the kids what they really like about the sports school and how it's actually made a, you know, difference? difference? Yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Awesome, awesome. So uh, let's have uh, uh, one of the new guys in here, uh, Kandavel. Kandavel, can you hear me? Okay, I don't think we can we can hear Kandavel. Maybe Darsh. Hi, Darsh. Happy birthday, Darsh. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Okay, Darsh, so what do you like about the sports school, one of its kind, uh, uh, you know, uh, school in uh, the nation? What do you like about it? And can you speak a little bit about the sports school? So, like everything about the sports school, like uh, uh, the uh, uh, academics, even the <clears throat> uh, sports, you know. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, um, could we have uh, Prapti? Hi, can you hear me, Prapti? Yes, sir. Hi, Prapti. How are you doing today? Good, sir. Okay, can you talk a little bit about the sports tool where you train and also study at the same time? Yes, sir. It's really fun to play and uh, have as well as studies it's really nice like the timings and all that stuff it, it it's really important to manage the timing i used to think that how will i manage both of the things studies as well as as well as tennis but it was very easy when i came over here like the timings and all it's very easy and it's very nice also especially coaches sir you're very sweet towards us and you teach very nicely okay thank you prapti Guys, we have Reshma amongst us, who's the under-18 India number one for everyone out there. Reshma, if you can speak a few words uh, about TSS, would be nice. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I don't have to worry about, uh, I don't have any tension about the studies and tennis because everything is available in one place and... Uh, uh, life is made simple because like we have to keep traveling from one place to the other for school, uh, tennis, fitness, we have to go to different places. But uh, here everything is available. The, co uh, the coaches, everybody are very experienced and uh, they're, they're helping us a lot with our game on and off the court. And uh, the infrastructure is very good. We, uh, the tennis courts, the gym, everything is uh, world class, and it's very good. And I'm I'm very fortunate to be training in the RBT and the sports school. Likewise, we are also very fortunate to have young budding stars like you all out here. Okay, who can speak next? Anyone volunteering to speak next? Can take the mic, no problem. No, yes. Samiksha? Okay, Samiksha probably can't hear us. Ritin, is Ritin here? Okay, Ratin also mm -mm, not able to hear. Um, Maya, Maya has raised her hand, sir. Maya, yes, Maya, go for it, Maya. Yes, so, so what I think is that it really supports and pays my future forward for both my teams, like academics and tennis. So I didn't have to worry about the marks, the studies, the timing, the exam, all those stuff, because it said it's all scheduled. So uh, I just know I want to keep pumping and go forward. So both the things are equal for me here. So I feel that's really good for my career in future. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's the whole idea to have, uh, you know, the right balance between tennis uh, or whichever sport and academics together and uh, move forward in our careers. Um, next up, uh, can we have uh, Ashwajit? Can you hear us? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you go for it? So, so like for me, like uh, the best part is here is the environment. Like ever since everyone is a sports player here, 
so like nobody is slacking off and then like everyone is focused determined like nobody is also like uh like trying to give the best on the academics also it's just not like i'm playing sports so i can give free time on my academics so yeah that's the best part for me very good thank you uh, any of the cricketers or the footballers out here maybe they can say a few words i'm not too sure about you guys i don't know you guys too well but if anyone's here you can just take the mic and say a few words yes no Okay, I think, uh, ma'am, that's it uh, from my side. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. Glad ma'am, to hear. Ma'am, uh, ma'am, uh, please hold on. Rohan is uh, just coming in. Okay, yeah. sorry, great. Yeah, I, 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 good time. No issues. No <laughs> so issues. He just message saying uh, he's coming in. Yeah. Okay. So we'll wait. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. He should sure. be in. Uh, Sujit, uh, you can just uh, you know, take the you know, oh, oh man, explain all how what will be the, the the program today, like how we want to go about it before Rohan comes. Yeah. So um, one second, guys. Yeah, so uh, when Rohan comes in, we're going to have a few questions for him uh, from the coaches as well as the players. So I encourage uh, all the players to ask him a few questions. Uh, it may, Whatever it may be, no problem. Whatever situation you're facing, even uh, on court or how we would deal with it or how we would see it differently. Absolutely uh, no problem with that. He's a, he's a fun guy. He can, he can talk pretty well too. So... Mm. We're going to start off with uh, Zohan here. Hi, Zohan. Welcome. Hi, hi, hi everyone. Oh, welcome, sir. Good Thank evening. you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening for you guys. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah. So, uh, so we could start in then. Uh, Shruti, ma'am, are you there? A small welcome. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please start. Everyone. Yeah, as all of us know, today we have Rohan Bopanna sir with us, an Indian professional tennis player. And it's my pleasure to introduce him. And he has held number three, highest career ranking in doubles is number three, world number three in 2019. And he's awarded Ekalavya Award by the government of Karnataka in 2000. And he's not only recognized for his achievements in sports, but also for global campaigns like Stop War and Start Tennis. And it's a pleasure to welcome you, sir. And we also have Balu, sir, and Sujit, sir, and the whole RBTA team. Welcome you all. And I request. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I request Gagan to take over. Hi, Rohan. Hi, Gagan. Uh, Rohan, we have, I have a few questions for you. Okay. Uh, first question would be, uh, did you play any sport before tennis? And uh, if yes, what sport was it? And what made you, uh, you know, settle to tennis as your sport? Like, what made you choose tennis? Like, you would want to choose that as your career path. So you could tell us something about that. First of all, good evening, everybody. I mean, uh, really nice to be chatting to you all. Uh, it's, uh, I think, the first time we are doing something like this. So it's really nice to see you all being away, miles away from, uh, you know, India. Right now, I am here in New York at the US Open. Uh, coming to your question, Gagan, uh, actually playing, uh, before starting my tennis career, I played all other sports, starting from, of course, cricket, uh, football, field hockey, 
uh, yeah, you know, so I played uh, even uh, badminton. Uh, you know, I did play a lot of other sports before getting into tennis. Uh, you know, tennis happened to be uh, that there used to be two tennis courts next to my uh, house in Coorg and. Uh, uh, one day, my parents decided to uh, take me there, and uh, I used to watch all the members playing, watch them playing as well, uh, you know, just at a club level, and uh, see all of them so much of fun. It was fun to watch uh, them playing this uh, sport. Uh, and you know, one day I started uh, uh, getting on the court, and my dad said, "Okay, to before we start playing tennis, we need to, you need to become a ball boy." And uh, you start picking the balls, helping the uh, members at the club before I give you a racket, uh, you know. And back then there was no uh, red, green dot, orange ball. There was only one, uh, you know, size uh, uh, tennis ball back then. And uh, even the rackets was just one size. So it was, uh, you know, difficult. I mean, uh, you know, for a couple of times when I held a racket at uh, probably at the age of 10, it was so heavy for me. Uh, you know, it was even hitting a ball was extremely difficult. So I obviously had fun uh, being a ball boy because uh, I was somebody who had a lot of energy, and um, my mom thought best is for me to spend all that energy on the tennis court, being a ball kid running around everywhere. And at the same time, I was watching the sport. Uh, you know, getting to see what everybody was doing and. Uh, that's how I played other sports, but tennis came only when I was almost 11 years old when I started, uh, you know, my tennis, to answer your question there, Gagan. Okay, thank you, Rohan. Uh, so, you said you started tennis at 11. So, then at which age did you play your first tournament and which was it? Like, which tournament uh, was the first, like, you started competing? Actually, after uh, uh, maybe a year and a half later, I was playing some state tournaments. I played a cup. I was in Kurd, so I was playing a few tournaments there. Uh, and then I remember after playing four or five tournaments, I went back to my uh, you know parents and told them I don't want to play tennis again because I was not winning matches. I was just losing every match I played, uh, you know. But uh, uh, thankfully, my you know my parents were very encouraging. Uh, you know, they kept saying that uh, you know not to really worry about. Uh, uh, you know, the outcome of the match. As long as I'm enjoying playing tennis out there, that is the most important thing. Um, you know, especially when you're a junior, not to really worry about the ranking uh, or anything at, uh, at that matter. The, the idea is you're a junior and you're still learning. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to achieve in your tennis career. Nothing's going to happen overnight. Uh, so, you know, it took me at least a couple of years, uh, you know, to slowly start playing the state tournaments, start winning a couple of, a couple of matches. Uh, obviously, from poor when I came to Bangalore or Mysore, when I played, the level of tennis was higher, better uh, in terms of uh, the tennis. So, I got to play with better players. Uh, slowly, uh, getting into an academy also helped you know, get better coaching. So, that helped my game as well. I came to Bangalore uh, training uh, with this... Uh, uh, unfortunately, he's uh, not there anymore, Mr. Uh, Naidu at Bowring Club, you know, back then. And uh, not many of you all know that uh, Sujit's uh, brother, Suraj, was the best tennis player in Karnataka, you know, back then when I was playing. We were both uh, uh, the same age and I used to watch him and he's the one who used to win all the tournaments in Karnataka constantly, you know, and uh, every time I played him, I hardly got, forget winning the match. He barely gave me games, you know, so the, you know, the, those were the, these matches actually ended up, I think for me, a learning experience more than my matches, which I won. The matches which I lost, I learned more, uh, you know, and constantly... Uh, you know, then I started traveling. I got to know a few other players on the circuit. I became friends with a lot of them. Started traveling together, enjoying the travel. And then slowly, you know, uh, year by year, I was winning a couple of matches here and there, reaching quarterfinals, reaching semifinals. Uh, you know, so it, it, it did take a very, very long time, you know, for me to understand how difficult the sport is. And how much discipline is required, you know, for me to, you know, get to a good level. 
Nice. So thank you, Rohan. I'm sure uh, players also. Uh, I have one last question. Okay, so now we have a lot of players who are competing or also will be getting into the competition zone. So what is that one advice you could give all of our players uh, when they're getting into competition or when they're going for a match? So the biggest uh, advice what I would love to give uh, each one of y'all is that when you're at the competition, it's not suddenly to worry whether my forehand is working, whether the serve is working, whether I'm going to be playing well. Everything happens at the academy, at the practice center. When you go to the, <clears throat> sorry, when you go to the tournaments, it is about trusting what you have learned from the coaches and putting that into practice. When you go there, don't worry suddenly like, oh, today my forehand is not working, so that's why I lost. It's If you already start thinking before the match that your forehand is not going to work, or if you're going to hit double falls now, it is going to happen. So when you go there at the match, you need to stay as positive as possible. Believe in yourself. You know, the winning and losing part don't worry about that. When you're there, go out there and play one point at a time, one game at a time, slowly, and that will help you. Keep being positive on the court. Keep encouraging yourself because sometimes parents may not be there, coaches may not be there around, or you're, you're there by yourself playing tournaments. So the only way is to encourage yourself. Stay positive in your mind. Keep believing it. Even though it's till you have not lost that last point, you always have a chance. So keep fighting and you know that is the most important. Anything after the match you feel did not help or did not work, you come and speak to the coaches and we'll work it at the academy. Nothing can be done right there and then in between when the match is on. You can't suddenly say that let me try and hit a top spin which I've not tried, you know, and all that. The, at the match, you just understand and play the ball and play the point how you feel the best way it is to, to be done. Perfect. Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much. I'm sure our players can get a lot from your pointers. Uh, Sagar, you Thanks, can take sir. over from here. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, G. Uh, hi, Ron. First of all, good morning. Thanks for taking your Thanks, time. Sagar. I hope you're doing good. I have a few questions. You yes, mentioned Thank you. about you started uh, tennis in Coorg and uh, um, that's as a junior. And over here in RVTA, TSS, we stress a lot about the schedule, what they have to do, when they have to do through the day. Can you take us through how your schedule was when you were in Coorg and when you um, were a little older in Pune and both the academies? So, uh, just, uh, I mean, that's actually a great question you bring up there, uh, Sagar. Actually, when I was uh, 12, 13 years old, uh, there were a few academies across uh, India where uh, my dad and mom both took me to selections. Unfortunately, I did not get selected to any of these academies. Uh, so there was an academy in Pune also, which I did not uh, you know, get selected. But uh, the coach at that point of time told me, uh, you know, you can come to Pune. Uh, you know, we have an option to come and uh, use the facility. You can pay for the facility. You got muted there, Rohan. You muted for last 10 seconds. I guess. Uh, not sure how that happened. Uh, uh, but uh, sorry, when I went to uh, you know Pune uh, at the age of 14, um, uh, especially for my training, Balusar was one of the coaches there. Uh, the other coaches were uh, Narendra Nath and uh, Nandan Pal. These three coaches who were there at that point of time. But so when I went into uh, Pune, uh, my dad obviously ha had no idea about the city. He did not know anyone. The language was different. Everything was different. And then we found a hostel with a warden there. And he said, okay, you're going to stay in this hostel. Uh, and then we went to a, then he said, okay, come, I'm taking you shopping. So I said, okay, great. This is, sounds, you know, uh, very nice. Uh, you know, I'm come to a new city. He's going to take me shopping. He takes me to a cycle shop and he says, please choose the cycle you want. So I was very 
happy and he gave a sign. And he said, this is going to be your transport now to go from where you're staying to the tennis academy, to the fitness center. So every day, I was doing about 15 kilometers on my cycle. That is from waking up because we started fitness sometimes at 5.45 in the morning. In the winters, it was 6.30. And I don't know whether Balu sir came up with the rule or anybody else came up with this rule, but it was very, very important. If we missed fitness, there was no tennis for anybody there. And do remember back then, you know, there were no phones. My parents were not there to wake me up. I had to do everything by myself. I set an alarm. So if it was 5.45 training, you had to wake up an hour earlier, have your breakfast. Then I used to cycle four kilometers one, day, one way. You know, whether it's cold or not cold, you have to find a way. You have to find these things. I mean, today, all your uh, players out there, today, all you players out there, you know, have a great opportunity because not only from staying super close to the academy, apart from that, you have your fitness, tennis, uh, education, your food, everything in one place. And this is an ideal you know, situation to be in. I never had this opportunity. Like I said, you know, I used to go to four different places to do, you know, morning tennis was different, evening tennis was a different center. The fitness was in another place. So I was going to three different places and I did this for a good four or five years before I left Pune and I came back to Bangalore. Uh, you know, but these years really... But again, I was still playing tournaments, not winning tournaments. It doesn't mean that I was training there. I was doing this day in, day out constantly for, like I said, four or five years. And again, I was making quarters, maybe semis, if at all, maybe two tournaments a year, maybe three tournaments a year. Otherwise, I was just losing first round, second round, first round, second round. So, the, my main thing here is the fact that never underestimate yourself. There's still a lot more years, there's a lot more opportunities for you to make that breakthrough. Come through, uh, you know, great opportunities by... Uh, getting all these wonderful coaches you have to guide you in a in a great way. You know, never doubt yourself. The minute you start doubting yourself, that is when your tennis takes a backseat. So this is a little bit of my journey, you know, coming into, you know, and starting my uh, tennis career. Thanks a lot, Ron. Thanks a lot for your... Uh... I have another question, again, staying with the junior days. And uh, I just have one thing to say. The cycle rule, I'm sure Balusar only came up with that rule. Um, uh, coming there at 5.45 and oh, no, the, uh, <laughs> being the that cycle rule, The cycle rule was not Bal, uh, Balusar, I, mean, I think. Yeah. But the, uh, the timing, timing may have been, uh, you know, yeah, for the sure. cycle, I had no other option but to use that. Yeah. I hope all the kids are listening because these are really nice stories and you can take a lot from it. And again, Rohan, going back to your junior days, is there anything you would like to change if there is one thing you could have done different, maybe? Yeah. I mean, I would love to have been in a center like RBT today, to be honest. You know, where everything is there. Easier for me, much easier. Just come there in the morning and then leave in the evening. Or I'm staying there itself. Everything was there. You know, because at the, uh, you end up spending uh, so much more energy by, you know, making this travel up and down constantly, you know, trying to find, uh, you know, the right kind of food. Because we did not have, I mean, I did not have anybody who's monitoring my food or telling me what to eat. I just ate whatever was given there, uh, you know, for me. Uh, you know, and I, like I said, I was staying in this hostel. So it was just whatever was served there. Uh, you know, I just ate that there was nothing really. And my parents were miles away. The parents were in Kool, I was in Pune. So, you know, so it was not like uh, I had a telephone. There were more, no mobiles then. I couldn't just call up and say, you know, I need this. I need that. This is what is happening. You had to adapt to the situation accordingly. And, uh, you know, I think these are the things which really helped me 
uh, you know, understand what I needed as a tennis player. Uh, you know, I really thank uh, you know Balu sir for having those you know uh, rules set in, which I think helps a tennis player. You know, to understand what is required to become a tennis player, and you know, and he always, I think, even till today, he always says, "Don't." Uh, you know, or think overnight you're going to become a champion. It is going to take years. It's going to take a lot of time. You know, the discipline, the commitment, not only from uh, you players, but us coaches as well. All of us are putting in the time for you guys. I mean, we want you to do well. I mean, one prime example, let me tell you. I am 41 years old. And today, I'm the only Indian playing at the US Open main draw with my ranking yes everybody else you know there's an opportunity yes sanya mirza is another person playing here in the main draw but there's only two players remember playing at the us open and i really think this is something which has to change you guys can do it so you need to think big too but to think big y'all need to put in this commitment you need to put in this time you know, so many of y'all had a great opportunity right now at home during the lockdown. But you'll never focus on that fitness, never focused on what is required. You know, these sacrifices has to be made now if you want to become a champion in tennis. Everything is related to tennis around it. Make sure you sleep well, make sure you eat well. And it's not only you players, it's the parents for each one of y'all there listening, I'm telling y'all, it comes from you guys first before it comes from anybody else. So all this is extremely important. I mean, this is one thing I would have loved to have changed, uh, you know, Sagar, if I had, if I was, you know, back then uh, when I was a junior. Thanks, Rohan. I just have thanks a lot. I just have a last question. Um, we have a lot of juniors here listening, and we have few of the country's best actually listening in to our call right now. Uh, you, and we spoke a lot about juniors, as I, uh, as I said. Your transition from juniors to men's or juniors to the seniors, how was it? And any few, uh, few things you can talk about it. So my biggest, my biggest thing is that, yes, today you are the best in your... Uh, age category in your field, but that is not the goal which you need. You need to get there, be the best in the, in not only in your country, but best try and be the best in the world. You can be the best in the world. And for that to happen, for me, like I said, I kept doing it day in, day out constantly. Only at the age of 21, when I passed my juniors, I had my big breakthrough. I won a big national tournament in Chennai. Uh, you know, and that, got me into the Davis Cup team and slowly everything changed. You know, I got stronger, like I said, but I was doing the work day in, day out. I'm like my, like I said, till I was 20, 21, I had no results. Maybe I had a couple of state tournaments, but nothing, you know, significant enough to say, yes, I can believe in myself. So don't, Think that okay, you're just because you're number one junior in the country, that is what I've done and that is enough. It's it's not enough. You need to be the best in the world. You need a long way, many years to get there. So there's a lot of hard work. You know, after under 12, two more years later, you're about to be under 14 and so on and so forth. I mean, if you're under 12, number one, it doesn't mean automatically you're going to be under 14 or then uh, later on, under 16, under 18, number one. Every year is a lot of hard work, a lot of commitment. And remember, the most important in things, when sometimes, you know, as a, as a junior, when you're there at the semifinals or finals, you feel the pressure more playing these matches. That's where you need to believe in yourself the biggest. Write it down every time what happened in that finals. Write your matches down, what you could have done differently. You know, there's a lot to learn from each other. Keep supporting each other. Keep pushing each other. You know, and you know that is what is going to make you better players. Thanks, Ron. Thanks a lot. Hope all the juniors again are listening. Um, 
I'll, I think Vignesh has a few questions. And before I go, best of luck for your matches, US Open. Hope you kill it. Thanks, thanks, Agar. Thank you. Good evening, Rohan. Uh, I have a few questions for you as well. Uh, my first question is, uh, what a player thanks. needs to do to reach his full potential and get to Grand Slams? And what's your advice on that? I think uh, the, the most important thing there, uh, you know, uh, Vignesh or anyone who's listening is that to commit yourself every day to the 100% of what you're doing. There's no half-hearted. There's no uh, today, okay, today I'll take a day off. Or uh, if you're taking a day off, also make sure you get the proper rest, proper, uh, you know, do your stretches, do your, you know, some kind of workout required, whatever it may be. But the commitment has to be there through and through. It doesn't mean, uh, you know, just because I, um, I have a day off today, I'll completely take it off. I completely relax. I'll eat whatever I want because all the hard work you have put in, it goes back and then you have to start again, you know, from the start. So to get to the, you know, Grand Slam, just remember that you guys are trying to get to the Grand Slam. So is 50,000 other players from each and every country, you know, trying to do the same thing. So just remember, if you are putting that much work, the same person out there in different countries doing exactly the same thing or probably better. So remember, it's not about just becoming, like I said, number one in your country. You need to look at what you can do to be the best in the world to get to the Grand Slam level. And that is what I, you know, I really feel is required. Uh, thanks a lot, Rohan. Uh, I have one more question for you. So I know uh, just Balasa just said uh, you played for India for 19 years, and I have a question on that. So can you share your experience of uh, being in a tough situation in a Davis Cup, playing for the country, and how did you handle it, handle that situation? You know, for me, the biggest thing what helped, you know, when playing for a, a country is enjoying the moment. Being there and saying, yes, I have chosen to represent my country with a billion people. I'm proud to be, you know, representing India. And every time I told myself, yes, I belong here, you know, that's when I played my best tennis. Like I keep saying, winning and losing is part of the game. Nothing can change that. But you need to enjoy where you are, where you have come from and what you have achieved. And that's why you've been selected to represent the country. Uh, like Vignesh said, it's been 19, 20 years being playing, you know, uh, Davis Cup. At the end of the day, I'm still here playing. Literally after US Open, I'm going now to Finland to represent India again. The only reason I'm here is because there is nobody from India pushing me or challenging me enough to take my spot. You know, I'm still here playing at the highest level because I, I travel with a coach, I travel with a physio, I do my work even today, day in, day out, I make sure I maintain and do everything properly. And that is why I feel so many years I have sustained my career to get to, you know, where I have reached. And this is it. When you get to that stage, enjoy the moment. And like I said, you have achieved to get to that stage and let nobody tell you anything else you need to believe in yourself first before anything else and no pressure you will feel when you play uh, you know these big matches thanks a lot rohan i hope uh, kids who are listening thanks, have man. learned something from this and uh, they'll uh, try and work hard and try and play for davis cup for india and uh, be like you <laughs> wish you yeah <laughs> Yeah, David. Uh, yeah, Davis Cup and Fed Cup. I think each one of y'all can really target and a lot more as well. Yeah, Sujit, can you take over from here? Thank you, Vignesh. Hey, Rowan, how are you? Um, Hi, Sujit. I'm good. Yes. A um, couple of questions uh, that I have for you. What are the ch challenges that you face staying away from family at such an young age? I mean, you moved uh, to another academy in Pune, away from family. So can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, these is was the toughest uh, moments. I mean, you know, being away from, 
you know close people uh, you know being away from home having home food missing all your friends suddenly when you hear uh, your friends going to birthday parties uh, your parents going to some family functions everybody there obviously you know you want to be there you want to enjoy these moments also but the what is the most important thing there was i knew why i had made the sacrifice why i had moved to pune and what my goal was my always remember the friends family after your tennis journey after your tennis career they'll all be there you can celebrate with them you can be with them you can talk to them today you'll have the privilege to keeping in touch with your you know mobile phones uh, you know you can call them you can video call them so that that much more connection you'll have i think this was the toughest part uh, but i told myself if i want to be a the best tennis player for the country and play all these grand slam i need to make these sacrifices so uh, you know so that helped me uh, you know understanding what i was there for pune for what my priority was uh, you know in every step okay thank you uh, my next question would be how do you handle uh, the criticism that comes to you i don't know what uh, criticism about everybody uh, when i say when uh, people are talking about me whether it's good or bad that means i'm doing something right you know so there's no criticism everything is a positive you know whether like i said it, you know what you're doing you if you are waking up you are doing the training you are playing the tennis anybody can say whatever they want because they are not the ones doing it you are the one doing it so whether it is whether they are saying a good thing or whether they are saying a bad thing it does not really affect you in any way you need to just you know do what you are doing and you know keep focusing on your tennis and your journey you know and people sometimes criticize you because you are doing everything right you know so please remember that i mean you know let that not affect you in any way the most important thing is you need to focus on yourself okay thank you thanks vijay um my next question would be any experiences from your uh, young uh, age playing days which help you at the pro level right now which you're at and any word of advice for the young upcoming athletes uh, watching you right now i think the biggest thing there is uh, you know being on time everywhere being on time uh, you know whether it's a match or being uh, you know for practice making sure i'm ready way before you know the practice starts if, if the practice starts at 9 o'clock i go, i make sure I, i eat my food well in time i do my stretches i i warm up properly because when i step on that court at 9 o'clock i'm ready to hit that ball you know so those are the things which as a junior started helped me in my you know uh, tennis career through and through even till today i mean because each one of you when there's a match when you're going to you're always on time so i don't understand why during practices or during anything else you all should be late so starting that from the practice day starting doing that this is what helped me uh, you know even till today it has uh, you know taken me a long way in understanding that discipline and following that uh, uh, you know because in tennis you want to travel you need to take a flight you need to be on time you need to take a train you need to be on time because that flight or the train is not going to wait for you so that has to start from yourself day one itself when you get into wherever you are training whatever it may be that commitment has to be there from your end thank you my last question would be any memorable moments you want to share with us that can inspire all of us here yeah i mean <laughs> you know there's been so many wonderful uh, you know memorable moments but the most memorable you know moments for me is few few of the davis cup matches which i have actually lost 
these are more memorable because uh, you know I remember in uh, 2002 I uh, made my debut for India in 2003 we were playing a match in uh, uh, Holland and I was playing this uh, player called Martin Walker uh, he was ranked uh, 14 in the world back then he had just made the French Open final um, and I I was ranked about maybe 200 or 300 in the world and like i said he was ranked 14 in the world and uh, it was my first match with him in holland uh, and we played i think 4 hours 45 minutes or something and i lost uh, 10 12 or uh, you know 12 14 in the fifth set uh, he served about 43 aces that day uh, you know despite that it was a fantastic match not only because of that because next day when i came onto the court uh, we were down 2-0 and we had the doubles and i walked into the double uh, to play the doubles and everyone in the stadium in holland actually stood up and they gave me a huge applause for the effort i had put in the previous day they gave me a huge applause that day itself after the match but next day get that kind of you know support and applause from somebody not from your country and really understanding that i had played to the highest potential there and that was an incredible moment i mean even till today you know uh, you know i i remember uh, that particular moment and i really cherished it and this is uh, you know something you should always uh you know look forward to because you never know where your inspiration can come from you can always you know uh, you know so this was a big moment in my uh, you know career to have that kind of moment that's amazing roha i hope all the kids out here will benefit from all the answers that you gave us today um now i'm going to give the mic over Thanks to all the students uh, of tss uh who wants to go at it first can put your hand up okay i see darsh darsh go for it yes sir um darsh you have to unmute yourself sir yes sir uh Darsh, are you there? It's okay. Maybe we can take his question later. So, uh, anyone else? Someone else? Kandavel. Okay, Kandavel, go. Sir, when you are in nervous situation, what do you think, sir? Sorry, Kandavel, I didn't uh, hear you there. Can you? Is there somebody else yeah, also using the, the same? Talk, Kandavel. Yeah, go ahead, Kandavel. When do you? When are your nervous situation? What do you think, sir? I think he's trying to ask you if you're nervous in during nervous situations. What? Uh, do you think of uh, yeah how do you handle nerve situation during matches yes sir so kandavel uh, the biggest thing uh, as a player you're uh, you're only nervous when you're not prepared for what you you know going to get when you're prepared and you understand what you need to do on the tennis court or during a match you need to trust i mean say your set point down you need to trust your serve you need to trust your forehand at that point of time so that helps you think positively and take away the nerves so always remember it doesn't matter what the score is because you you just need to play that particular point and then take it from there Now, even if you love five love forty down just think of winning that next point and one point at a time that
Okay. Reshma? Thank you, sir. Hi, sir. Um, sir, what is the major difference between like the training in abroad and here? Because some people uh, like they go to abroad and train is, and what is like the major difference why people prefer to go there? Is it like not possible from here? Some people prefer to go there. Uh, hi, Reshma. First of all, uh, congrats for, you know, the great weeks uh, you've had. And uh, to answer your question, it's very, very simple. Uh, because whoever went abroad are not playing in the US Open today to when to train. I, I trained in India and I'm the only one playing here at the US Open. To answer that question for you, it doesn't mean, you know, you have to go abroad to get to where you are. It's about what you do and what your kind of training and commitment is what is going to get you at that, that level. Everybody, whether it is in India, whether it is abroad or wherever it is, it is the commitment, the time, the discipline which you put in is going to get you there. Sanya also. Rohan and Sanya are the two people in US Open now. Exactly. But, and both of us trained in India. Yeah. Uh, so one more question. Like, based on the progress of Indian players, um, like, what is the best to choose between singles and doubles in general? And why did, like, you pick doubles? I would say singles is definitely the right choice and the right part to go ahead. I chose doubles only when I was 30 years old. I had, you know, much later in my career when, uh, you know, my rankings for my singles and doubles was different. And I was still playing a sport which I loved so much. That's why I decided to change. You know, nobody starts off playing doubles right in the beginning. And let me tell you, it is no guarantee that just because you're a singles player, you're going to be good in doubles. It's a completely different skill set altogether. It it takes a lot of... If it was, like I said, if it was that easy to make the change, we would have had tons and more of doubles players also from the country, you know, playing. But it's still not. It's still just one or two players who are still playing. Yes, we have. We've had four or five players, you know, playing at the Grand Slam at a certain point of time. But is that is much later in their career, much later, you know, when you're older and your body, uh, it's much harder to train and, you know, play singles at a high level. So that's when, you know, you make that switch. But starting off, it is always singles you're focusing on. Singles is something you constantly are working on to, you know, try and achieve your best at. So, last question, like, how do the pros uh, plan their tournaments? How do they, like, schedule their uh, tournaments and how many ma uh, matches do they play in a year? Like, how many weeks of matches? So, uh, everybody, it, it's planned with your coaches, with your team, and that's how you work through it. You know, they, they may be playing 20 tournaments in a year, to slowly start with to leading up to 25, 28, 30 maximum tournaments in a year. But it all depends on how you're doing, If uh, what is the right tournament to peak at. And that's where the coaches can guide you, give you a good experience of, uh, you know, what tournaments to peak at. Sometimes it's not about, uh, you know, uh, playing 30 tournaments, but always trying to peak at just... Uh, you know, state tournament and not doing well in a national or an international tournament. The ITFs are the ones to peak at, you know, especially when you're, you know, playing. The state tournaments are the ones to just get you match practices at where you are today. I'm specifically talking to where you are today. The, those are, you know, your your goals to, you know, what to get to start playing a lot of lot more WTA tournaments because those are the tournaments you need to start peaking at and doing well at. You know, so... That is where it's very important for you to speak to the coaches, even if you have to reach 
you know uh, when i'm there i'm happy to you know speak to you guys to un- you know we all sit together as a team to help you you know uh, get to the right tournaments and that is the most important it's not about just playing 30 tournaments the whole year just because a pro is doing that each player does it differently each player the tournaments works differently so just because i play 30 tournaments doesn't mean you play 30 tournaments as well you know or if i play 10 tournaments for you you need to do the same thing everyone has different sets of goals different sets of uh, planning so that's why it is an individual sport and we have to focus it like that thank you so much sir welcome sir uh thank you arya yes sir so when i was playing one of the matches recently i was not nervous when i was like down like many times i am mostly nervous when i'm down but this time i was four love up against one of the good players but from there i continuously lost seven games in a row so i became tight after a four love up and lost seven games in a row so like how can i improve that so the most important thing uh, are you there when you were up 4-0 you were not thinking of the game that day you were not thinking of your tennis you were thinking that oh i'm beating this higher seeded player i'll have a great win now i may I, you know i have a chance i'm already leading you were not focusing at that point of time what your particular game about you were already looking about oh you have won the match and what everybody is going to say oh i you know beaten a higher player and they're going to be really happy about it so that suddenly what happened you know you lost a few games and then when it became equal you know uh, he started playing better your game you know probably w- which made the difference you know so at that like i said when you are up there think again one point at a time slowly and that is where it will help you think about just the, the next game the next point not about the outcome of the match you know and that will that will help you when you play you know the better players and in case you are up just focus on that one game at a time one point at a time thank you sir so even anurag had one question so when you get angry in a match like when you get irritated or get angry in a point or a match how do you control it you eat an apple uh, anurag when you go and sit in the change over you eat an apple or you bite the tennis ball when you get angry next time okay you are, you don't need to get angry you need to enjoy the match you need to enjoy where you are uh, you know playing next time you get angry take the ball and just bite it as hard as you can trust me you won't get angry again when once you t- once you taste the tennis ball yes, okay oh bro so like when you first started playing atp tournament so some like big tournaments and like you play like players who you've heard of or like you watched on tv how do you feel in match they want to pass players uh, for the match how do you feel like what feeling can you repeat uh, that question because in between i uh, lost a couple like, of uh, words there like when you started playing like professional atp tournaments and all you started playing players like famous players who you watched on tv and all so like when you first time played them how did you feel i was uh, extremely happy to be playing them because uh, you know suddenly i was not uh, watching them on tv anymore i was sitting with them in the same tournaments and you know competing and talking to them uh, you know so uh, you know i was happy to be uh, you know right there with the best tennis players in the world and uh, you know that is what i wanted to achieve and wanted to be there uh, you know so you should realize that what you want and where you want to achieve and when you achieve that enjoy like i said enjoy where you are and then you will play always better tennis okay thank you 
Okay, do any of the teachers here have any questions for Rohan? If yes, you can put your hand up. Sir, I have a question. Uh, Dev, uh, yeah, Dev, go ahead. So, hi, sir. Uh, sir, uh, to reach the level you are, you might have gotten like a lot of advices from your coaches, parents. So, which is like the best advice you got? You know, the, uh, Dev, the, uh, the best part was, even till today, when whenever say somebody says something, right, I'm happy to listen to them, understand where they're coming from. Uh, you know, it's not like just one advice you take for one person and go throughout your life. Every part of your journey, you're always learning, learning from each other, learning from someone. You know, so for the one of the biggest things was to believe in myself. And that is, you know, something which my dad always told me. And I still, you know, keep uh, doing, doing that. He keeps saying, doesn't matter which part of the game, which part of the match it is. You know, always trust your instincts, trust and believe in yourself. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Okay, if we have uh, no teachers, then maybe we have one last question from one of the students, Maya. Yes, sir. So, sir, it's like when you when you go into a big tournament, slam matches. So, what would be a mindset? When I go into uh, what matches, my like big tournaments, like slams, like uh, slam tournaments into matches. What would be a mindset? My my uh, mindset is always to go to each and every tournament out there, knowing that I'm going to win the tournament. Uh, you know, for example, uh, uh, you know, right now I'm here uh, at the U.S. Open. Uh, my best performance at the U.S. Open has been reaching the final. So, and I, uh, and I always think I can better that. And that is what my goal is. Every time I go to a tournament, which I've already been, I always try and you know, do something better than that. And that is something I've always followed. Uh, and, I, and I really believe that I belong at this tournament, playing at the highest level with the best players in the world. And, uh, you know, that is what, you know, helps me prepare for these tournaments. Thank you, sir. Okay. Over to you, uh, Japriya, ma'am. And also, uh, Maya, the most important thing, uh, you know, at a junior level is to focus on your performance, not the results. You know, at a junior level, for anybody out there, you know, don't worry about what the outcome may be. Focus on what you are doing right and what you're doing, which will help you, you know, uh, going forward. Yes, sir. Sure. Just yes. out of curiosity, coming to academics, uh, which was your favorite subject and which subject you didn't like? English, ma'am. English was my favorite. Like, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Played through the middle, Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Rowan's a good platform you've set in for each one of us. I wish I had, you know, gone through this quite, uh, you know, when I was young, I think I would have been in the courts now. It is uh, really few things that I've taken over from this session is believe in yourself and focus, have passion. I think if we have passion, it takes us to whatever we look in for. And uh, leave criticisms aside. Uh, and last, enjoy what we, we do. I think the moment we enjoy what we do, we surely uh, would be able to do it. And that's what we've been doing here also. I was of the mindset that, you know, we have to always be set into academics. Nothing else comes in that way. But then uh, we have all been trying to now match uh, academics with balance it with sports and 
there have been so many changes in my first year i always felt it's very difficult we cannot do that we cannot bring in so many things in but then uh, you know what i've looked in there is if there is a will if we feel we are able to do we can do it we will surely do it and there is a lot that uh, children can take away from the session today where with the determination with things to achieve i think they can achieve anything under all your guidance and so this is something i wanted to really express because today i felt i wish i was influenced into the sporting field like that few years back i would have also surely taken the other path so uh, thank you so much uh, baba uh, thank you so much i mean uh, uh, thank you very much i think it's a learning from uh, all of us you know we learn from each other and i think uh, there are so many wonderful things uh, you are going i know now going forward you're going to help these kids you know go in a, in a you know the right directions because at the end of the day i'm sure you all of you all watched the tokyo 2020 olympics now the paralympics are on there's so much inspiration from each one of them you know to learn and achieve and you guys tomorrow can be the guys out there representing your country and winning medals for you know india versus asian games uh, whether it is olympics you know whether it is fed cup davis cup whatever it may be and you know us as coaches teachers we are all the here to help all of you and come together to get you all to the best and achieve the best so you know it's a great learning we are also working together uh, ma'am and i think uh, this is the best uh, way possible to really help the kids achieve the uh, you know what they can uh, you know Uh, what they can dream we can guide you to you know believe in that dream and get to uh, you know the reality yeah. very true sir very true and Thank nothing, you so much. nothing is impossible i think uh, that's what uh, through your experience through your uh, the path that you have chosen uh, that's one thing i would put it in bold nothing is impossible everything is possible provide you drive it with a passion and a determination to achieve and you are certain very good uh, and you know an, an example where each one of us are should be motivated to take it ahead so thank you on to you shruti ma'am for the book yeah uh, in spite of his big, busy schedule sir has taken time to make us understand that believing in oneself is very important it will take us to greater heights so i thank you sir and i would also like to thank balu sir and rbta team for the insight and this was truly an eye opener session for each one of us as we try overcome different stepping stone to achieve milestone i would like to thank our management team for organizing such sessions and expecting such session eye opener session very soon we will i would like to thank all each one of us each one of you in this session thank you all thank you so thank you so much ma'am thank, thank you, you very much, much. Uh, thank you thank you everyone have a great evening and all the best and see you all soon in bangalore all the best to you to rohan thank you thank you sir all the thank you guys thank all you very much thank you everyone thank you sir thank you all thank you sir bye bye sir thank you all the best thank you thank you bye bye sir thank you sir Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. All the best for you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir.